Good evening and a warm welcome to the 10th Mondalika Banerjee Memorial Lecture, organized by the Department of English and the Alumni Association of Lady Brimon College. Mondalika Banerjee was a student of English honors in this college from 1960 to 1963. Unfortunately, she passed away in 1986, succumbing to cancer. As desired by her family, this endowment lecture is being organized annually since 2012. Moreover, the Mondalika Banerjee Memorial Silver Medal is awarded to the best student of the English Department of Lady Brebon College, endowed by Sri Shomir Banerjee through the Alumni Association of this college. Today, we are delighted to have amidst us distinguished scholar and academician, Professor Obhijit Gupta, who will speak on comics in Bengal in, research, in search of a lost archive. It is a pleasure to have you amidst us, Professor Gupta. Thank you. Yes, sir. May I now request our principal, Professor Shiuli Sharka, to deliver her welcome address. Madam. Thank you, Madhumita. <clears throat> Respected our resource person, Professor Ovijit Gupta. Respected president of our alumni association, Srimati Ajanta Chaudhuri. Respected Head of the Department of the Postgraduate Department of English, Lady Brabham College, Professor Shantukta Das, eminent guests and dignitaries, my esteemed colleagues and our beloved students. A very good evening to you all. It's a wonderful occasion when the Postgraduate Department of English of our college, in collaboration with our Alumni Association has organized the Mandalika Banerjee Memorial Lecture on Google Meet platform. The webinar is being started now. The topic is quite interesting, Comics in Bengal in Search of a Lost Archive. The topic makes me nostalgic and I'm sure it will take many of the listeners like me back to our long lost childhood days. In winter, when our annual examinations were over and the results were yet to be published, we were allowed by our elders in the family to be engrossed in Bengali comics like Hada Buddha or Batul the Great or Nonte Ponte or something like that from the children's magazine Shuktara. And of course, the unforgettable adventures of Tintin from the great Bengali children's magazine, Anandamala. My father, poet Nirendranath Chakraborty, was the editor of the magazine, Anandamala, and he used to translate the comic strips of Haji's Tintin in Bengali. I can uh, fondly remember my father coming back home from his walk and sitting with the comic strips of Tintin with his evening tea on his writing table and uh, my elder sister and I eagerly waiting at his two sides to look at the English version of the comic strips at one glance and the Bengali version from my father's pen at the other. Uh, some days later, we started to read uh, Arunodev from the Bengali daily Anandabhaja Potrika and the Bengali daily Desh. We fought, uh, uh, you know, adventure comic strip. The Phantom started to be translated in Bengali again by my father. And the Bengali name Arunodev was my father's creation. Gone are those golden days. Today, uh, bigger Bengali children at all feel attracted to Bengali comics is really not known to me. Perhaps they are more interested in playing games in computer. However, 
I'm not going to make any remark and uh, neither I'm uh, there to waste much time by lingering my speech anymore. We are uh, really interested to hear from our speaker today, Professor Ovidit Gupta. Uh, I'm sure that from his talk, we will be able to learn a lot of new things and we will truly feel enriched and enlightened. I wish today's talk a grand success uh, and I wish the entire program a success. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Principal. May I now request Dr. Rajot Banerjee, eminent oncologist, and some of the late Wandalika Banerjee to say a few words about her. Sir, please. Thank you. So good evening to all of you in Kolkata, and I hope you uh, uh, understand my American accent in English. Uh, I'm Dr. Rajat Banerjee, uh, Professor of Medicine and Chief of Hematologic Malignancies at the Rutgers University Cancer Institute of New Jersey. Uh, I thank uh, Professor Das, the head of the Department of English, for inviting me to share a few words about my mother at this the 10th Mandalika Banerjee Memorial Lecture. I also acknowledge the efforts of the principal of the college, the Alumni Association, and the Department of English for supporting this lecture series over the years. Finally, I also look forward with keen interest to hearing Professor Abhijit Gupta's uh, talk on comics in Bengal. Uh, as I'm sure from many of us, uh, my exposure to comics began with uh, Tintin and Asterix comics bought from the train platform, book stalls, in my case at the Durgapur and Howrah train stations. Uh, and I'm not sure that these qualify as comics in Bengal, but we'll soon find out. Now with great pleasure, uh, I'll speak a few words about my mother, Mona Banerjee, after whom this memorial lecture is named. My mother, then Mandalika Chatterjee, was an English honors student of this college from 1960 to 1963. She was a prize-winning debater during her college years, which ensured that neither my father nor I ever won an argument with her. She developed her love of writing as a student of English at Lady Brabun and wrote both fiction and news articles for uh, Eve's Weekly and Femina magazines in India and for local newspapers and Indian American publications here in the US. Following college graduation, she moved home to Durgapur to her parents, Vashantika and Hori Prasad Chatterjee, uh, my dadu being chief engineer of Durgapur Steel. In Durgapur, she met and married my father, Shomi Banerjee, at that time a young electrical engineer. And in 1970, we all moved to the United States with a stopover along the way uh, at Oxford to visit my mashi, uh, Professor Amalabhika Bhattacharya, her husband, the late eminent historian, Professor Shobhashachi Bhattacharya, and at that time, my newborn cousin, their daughter, Oshidhara. Once in the US, my mother took on some early jobs with a local newspaper and then with a corporate newsletter before joining the publishing company Silver Burdett as an editor, and she rose up the editorial ranks uh, at that company. I remember uh, my mother as being quite intelligent, articulate, intellectually curious, and a loyal friend. She was ambitious, working on her PhD in English literature at New York University, uh, commuting to New York City from New Jersey after a full day's work in her office, and she also pursued a MBA to help learn uh, the business skills needed in the corporate world. She was a great supporter of many institutions, including our local library, serving on its board, and tragically, she developed breast cancer and died at the young age of 42. Her friends donated in her honor to the library in a brass plaque at the library entrance includes the name of Mana Banerjee, supporting the library's expansion in 1986, the year that she passed away. This same library was used by her grandchildren throughout their school years, and they could see their grandmother's name and feel connected to the institution and to the town our family has called home for these past 51 years. My mother had many happy memories of her college days and would be pleased, I'm sure, with this lecture series and the connection that this maintains with her college and its current students and faculty. 
On behalf of my father, Shomi Banerjee, my wife, Dr. Rachna Gupta, and myself, uh, I sincerely thank you and look forward uh, to Dr. Gupta's, uh, Professor Gupta's lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Banerjee. Thank you very much. Before I invite Professor Obhijit Gupta to speak, let me introduce him to our participants today. Professor Obhijit Gupta is Professor of English at Jadavpur University. He is also the Director of Jadavpur University Press and Joint Director of School of Cultural Texts and Records. He is co-editor along with Shapun Chakraborty of the Book History in India series of which four volumes have been published, Print Areas in 2004, Movable Types in 2008, New Word Order 2011, and Founts of Knowledge in 2015. He was Associate Editor for South Asia for the Oxford Companion to the Book 2010. He has completed an electronic database and location register for all books printed in Bengali from 1801 to 1914, which is now the basis of the two centuries of Indian print project at the British Library, London. His latest publication, The Spread of Print in Colonial India into the Hinterland, is just out from Cambridge University Press. His other research areas include science fiction and fandom, physical culture, graphic novels, crime fiction, and the 19th century. I now invite Professor Gupta to please deliver the 10th Mondalika Banerjee Memorial Lecture. Professor Obhijit Gupta, sir. Um, thank you, Modhumita, and uh, um, thanks everyone for joining this uh, um, uh, this this lecture at a somewhat odd time in the in the day, it's been a very grim day in Calcutta. Um, there have been um, oh, COVID is surging through the city, um, so I hope for this next hour or so, we uh, we will be able to um, divert ourselves by talking about something not very serious and not really very academic, in the strictest sense of the term. But before I begin, uh, I would uh, like to thank. Um, the uh, Alumni Association of Lady Brebhan College and the English Department of the College for giving me this opportunity to speak uh, about uh, something I've been doing intermittently for the last few years, but not, again, as I said, with a great deal of academic rigor. Um, I also thank um, um, Dr. Banerjee for his, uh, uh, for introducing, um, 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 for, for sharing the memories of his mother with us and uh, I incidentally grew up in Durgapur around about the same time, so uh, it, it, uh, in, the, in the late 60s and early 70s, so that uh, struck a chord. Um, I, and I thank the principal, Professor Shorkar, for, in a sense, uh, summarizing my talk in a nutshell, because uh, what I am going to talk about is, uh, or draw your attention to, is in fact the ecosystem of magazines and periodicals which sustain the Bengali comic book. And of course, um, uh, it, it, it was uh, wonderful. Um, to know, and I, I'd known that uh, Nirendra Chakraborty had translated uh, uh, Tintin for Ananda Mala in the 70s. I did not know that he had also translated Phantom, uh, uh, and that uh, Orono Dev was his coinage. So this is this is a great uh, um, kind of uh, uh, it's 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 a, t it's a tidbit of information which I ch which I cherish tremendously. And uh, in, indeed, uh, one could perhaps de deliver a, a, a spend an entire uh, session talking about. Uh, the impact of Nirendra Chakraborty's trans Bengali translation of Tintin comics, not just on the world of Bengali letters, but also on Bengali culture. But maybe that's for another time. In fact, my uh, lecture will stop just before Ananda Mala uh, in the 1970s. Now, um, much of the material that you will see, and because it's about comics, there's a lot of slides, so I hope you won't be too bored. Uh, uh, I, I, these are um, the fruits of uh, a, a digitization project uh, quite a long time back, I, I, I've forgotten how long back in fact, funded by the British Council East India, uh, who I should acknowledge. So in a sense it was, it was uh, we thought that uh, it, would, it was imperative at that time when we did the project to 
um, to, to digitize some of the uh, comic book material in uh, magazines and periodicals, which might get lost otherwise. Some of that material has since been collected uh, in, in uh, um, you know, complete uh, select editions, particularly the work of Narayan Devnath and Moyuk Chaudhuri. Uh, but a lot of the material is dispersed in the somewhat uh, uh, vulnerable ar archive of new um, periodicals and magazines. So uh, what you will see um, for much of this talk are in fact samples uh, from uh, from from periodicals which as, uh, have already been referred to primarily Shukara and uh, and Kishore Kishore Bharati um, uh, published by the two, two giant publishing houses of Dev Shaitokuti and Patra Bharati respectively. But there is I, I will do a little bit of a scholarly riff uh, if you uh, at the beginning because uh, it is not enough to talk about Bengali comics in isolation. It, there is it doesn't suddenly begin. Uh, in a certain at a certain historical point it is, we also need to contextualize um, the prehistory if you like of uh, um, image and text or the image and text in a kind of a juxtaposition when when did when did the world of Bengali print uh, begin to look at image and text together so there's a little bit of um, um, 19th century history which I want to talk about which um, uh, uh, so let me for, without further ado begin and uh, I will also um, share my uh, screen with you, um, Mr. Sex takes a little bit of time. Uh, oh, this was not supposed to be there. Um, okay, there should be something which you should be able to see on your screen. Ah. Yes, can you see the line, uh, the first slide here, yeah, everyone? Um, yes, very clearly, thank you. Okay, th thank you, thank you. So, sometime in 1819, John Lawson, an engraver in Cal resident in Calcutta and attached to the Baptist Mission Press, produced a woodblock of a lion for a series titled Animal Biography, intended as a textbook for schools in Lower Bengal. The series featured such animals as the rhinoceros, the elephant, the bear, and so on, all with accompanying images. But the impact of the lion's picture in at least one school was unprecedented. According to Bengal's first bibliographer, the Reverend James Long, the picture, quote, excited such alarm that one school where it was placed was at once emptied of its scholars. The Hindus believe there is only one lion in the world, unquote, and they thought this was obviously that lion in question. Now the story may be apocryphal, but Long was a conscientious documenter of the history of print in Bengal. If true, the anecdote would seem to indicate a moment of paradigm shift in reading and an acknowledgement of the power of the image. Though the chief reason for such panic may well have been Lawson's lifelike rendition of the Asiatic lion. His rhinoceros of the August 1822 number, uh, let me just move on to the next slide. Uh, again, let's need this. Yeah. The, the, um, his rhinoceros of the August 1822 number of animal biography had been equally lifelike with a passing note to Albrecht Dürer's seminal woodcut of the same animal in 1515. It was only six years ago, in 1816, that the first ever illustration in a printed Bengali book appeared. This was an edition of Onnoda Mongol, a long devotional poem written by Bharat Chandra Rai and published by Ganga Kishore Bhattacharya, the first Bengali entrepreneur of print. By the 1820s, it was nearly half a century that the printed book had gained a firm foothold in Bengal. After two centuries of start-stop engagement with print, beginning with Goa and then creeping along the Indian coastline, print had finally began socializing itself in the presidency cities of India. But the idea of text and image coexisting within the same printed page was slow to evolve. You will notice that I, I, I repeatedly say printed page because such a tradition was indeed common in the manuscript book where you could have images and uh, writing on the same page. Here again, I'm referring to print. Uh, in part, um, uh, the early productions of both the Calcutta and the Srirampur press were uniformly text heavy, with little or nothing by way of ornamentation. In part, this was owing to the lack of good engravers. In part, to the absence in the printing trade of indigenous artists who excelled in genres such as Potochitro. Um, but following the establishment of the Calcutta School Book Society in 1817, books meant for school curricula began to be issued by the society. Among these were several volumes in astronomy and geography, necessitating the reprodu reproduction of maps and charts. 
For example, Joyce's dialogues on mechanics and astronomy included four plates, for the engra engraving of which the society pen spent a sum of rupees 556. A copper plate of the solar system was engraved by Ramchand Shornokar in 1819-20, while in the following financial year, the engraver Kashinath Mistri was paid rupees 70 for vignettes, stamps, etc. And in the same year, another rupees 25 for plates illustrative of Pearson's teacher's manual. Another engraver called Radha Mohan was paid rupees 90 for engraving 33 diagrams of Euclid's geometry. Despite these, however, in 1825, the newspaper uh, periodical uh, Friend of India, while praising the fluorescence of native printing, had this to say about the quality of illustrations. And this is um, Friend of India in 1825. Many of those works have been accompanied with plates which add an amazing value to them in the opinion of the majority of native readers and purchasers. Both the design and exception, execution of the plates have been exclusive to the authors of uh, efforts of native genius. The plates cost in general a gold mohar, designing, engraving and all. Uh, for in the infancy of this art, as in many others, one man is obliged to act many parts. Thus, Mr. Horihor Banerjee, who lives at Jorashako, performs all the requisite offices from the original outline to the full completion. But though with true Eastern modesty, he styles himself in one corner of the plates, the best engraver and character, we doubt his ability when left to his own resources. The plates which he and others have executed from European designs have been tolerably accurate, but when left to native unassisted taste, the productions are miserable in the extreme. Now this is a friend of India, typically condescending, but it does provide us with a significant da da datum that native readers and purchasers considered plates as adding value to the printed text. However, other than the ubiquitous almanac, illustrations accompanying texts are hard to come by in the first half of the 19th century. An 1828 edition of the Onoda Mongol, mentioned above, featured full-page illustrations as well as a double spread, while an 1857 edition of the same work comprised as many as eight full-page, one half-page, and three ornamental illustrations. Obviously, it had been, become de rigueur for any work of Bharat Chandra to be lavishly illustrated, especially his courtly romance, Bidda Shundur. But other than this, there are few examples of accompanying illustrations in the indigenous book trade. There is a popular belief among scholars that the initiative in this regard was not taken by the more respectable printers and booksellers, but by the more popular Bhattala book trade, whose productions ranged from the sacred to the profane and caused much anguished hand-wringing in Bengali reformist and European missionary circles alike. Now, this is, this is a popularly held scholarly view, but this is not borne out by the actual books. For example, among the notable illustrated publications before the mid-century, we may count Dharmo Juddhya Brittan Torbanian's Holy War, 1848, 18 illustrations, Pratham Shikha, or an Anglo Bank Bengal Primer, 1850, 72 illustrations, Robinson Crusoe Choritro, um, Sri Rampur Press, 1852, 18 illustrations, Devi Juddho, Calcutta, Chaitanya, Chaitanya Chandrodoy Press, 11 full page woodcuts, two half page cuts, Jatriker Goti or Bunny and Pilgrim's Progress, Calcutta Baptist Mission Press, 1854, 16 plates. As you will see, with one exception, they're all productions of the missionary press. It is only from the 1860s that Bhattra publications began to incorporate illustrations on a regular basis, eventually leading to a recognizable visual genres in its own right. Also, not all illustrations were locally generated. Now, this is one of the most interesting things about the life of images in 19th century Bengal. In 1852, for example, the newly founded illustrated periodical of the Vernacular Literature Society, Vibhidharta Shangraho, purchased as many as 87 woodcuts from Charles Knight, London publisher, and John Drinkwater Bethune, a Calcutta-based educationist. One may surmise that these woodcuts would have a further afterlife, you know, in the, uh, as is evidenced by the periodic appearance of distinctly English illustrations as tale pieces to otherwise unrelated subject matter in Bengali books of the period. So what you, are, what you see here is a kind of a repurposing or recycling or um, upcycling uh, nowadays, let's say, of, of, of woodcuts which had, which had been produced for the London book trade and had, had been printed and did not have any further use. 
then, then they were sort of sold at a premium to the Indian market. So you would actually see images which do not seem to have an Indian flavor or Bengali flavor at all suddenly appearing in periodicals of this period because they were obtained cheap. So in a sense, you see a kind of, uh, if, if one were to do a kind of inventory of such images. No, right? Yes, um, sorry. Um, uh, so if, 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 we were, if one were to do an inventory of such images, one could actually be able to see a genealogy of how these images are trans transmitted from the, the, the uh, London, London or English periodicals that they first appeared in. And as a result, they also led to, and I, I, I don't suppose there's been sufficient work done on this, Certain, certain adaptations in, in uh, the style of drawing in late 19th and early 20th century Bengal. For instance, I'll give you two instances. One is uh, the very, very famous work, Konkaboti by Toilok Punath, in which there is almost a kind of a copy of Jabberwocky drawn by uh, Tenniel, John Tenniel in Lewis Carroll's Through the Looking Glass. Or, or even more dramatic, Shukumar Rai in his Abul Tabul models the three figures in the poem, Hashchi Mora, Hashchi Dekho, Hashchi Mora Alladi, on the hammerheads in Frank L. Oz's Wizard of, uh, Frank L. Baum's Wizard of Oz, which 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 was first published in the eighteen eighties. So there is a kind of borrowing and adaptation going on. That's sort of some not not something I'm going into right now. Now all this indicates a growing familiarity among readers with visual codes, resulting in a flourishing market in cheap visual prints, which of course is well known to this to this to, to this uh, audience. Uh, the pot the potter pots of Kaligat first printed from woodcuts, then lithographed as demand increased. Bortola prints came in the wake of the Kaligat school, added satire and social commentary to the repertoire, thereby participating in the creation of the nascent Beng Bengali public sphere. This satire was largely directed at the modern Babu and Bibi, or the urbanized husband and wife, with the theme of the uxorious male, a particular favorite. Nevertheless, as the century wore on, Bortola found itself increasingly marginalized as reformists gained an influence, and obscenity became both a, le both a legal and a social buzzword. With the evolution of a polite canon of taste, Bortola began to be associated with cheap, badly produced, and unwholesome literature. While this did not overly affect its commerce, its visibility and acceptance among middle class waned rapidly to the point of disappearance. What took its place were new genres, particularly in the field of periodicals and juvenile literature, and consciously drawing from English models. Thus, the first ever cartoon magazine in Bengali, Horbol Amhar, appeared in the end 1873 to be followed by the pioneering Boshontok in January 1874. Modeled on Punch magazine of London, Boshontok chiefly concerned itself with municipal matters, both its editor, Pranonath Dotto and illustrator, Ginindra Kumar Dotto, being activists of the municipal movement in Bengal and directed most of their barbs at civil malpractices. But, and as you will all know, it was in juvenile literature that image and text would finally become seamlessly integrated, most notable in the periodical Shandesh. Now again, much is known about Shandesh, so I'll just sort of very briefly um, refer to it. Its founder, Rupendra Kishore Rai Chaudhary, was, as you know, writer, painter, musicologist, editor, and a pioneer in the field of half-tone printing. Most periodicals of Fan de Siakla Bengal featured half-tone illustrations printed from Rupendra Kishore, erase blocks. Of his own books, the first to feature in his half-tone illustrations was Shekhaler Kotha, 1903, a book on the Jurassic Age for children. The cover shows a long-necked long plesiosaur rearing into the clouds to capture a gold-embossed pterodactyl. In the introduction to the book, Upendra Kishore wrote, and this is my translation, there are 17 large pictures in the book. All the pictures have been drawn specially for this book. Not one is a copy from books in English. That's important. What I have said about the language and the contents of the book applies to illustrations too. While I've been careful to draw the pictures as accurately as possible, I've been even more careful in making them pleasing to the eyes of children. The books which followed Shekhalir Kotha, Chiladir Ramayon, Chiladir Mohabharat, Tuntuni Boy, have all become children's classics in Bengali literature. In 1911, Ray published one of his own books, Chotto Ramayon, thereby combining the functions of author, publisher, illustrator, and blockmaker in himself. Now, the first issue of Shandesh came out in May 1913, um, the year in which Tagore became the first Indian and Asian to win the Nobel Prize in, in Literature. In the previous year, an article titled The Spirit of Rabindranath Tagore had appeared in Quest magazine of London. The author was, of course, Shukumar Rai, son of Rabindra Kishore, uh, who had been awarded a scholarship in 1911 to study at the London County Council School of Photo Engraving and Lithography. 
Like his father, Shukumar too was a keen amateur photographer. As a boy, he had won photography competitions run by Boys on Paper and Chums magazines. In, he would eventually become a fellow of the Royal Photographic Society in 1922, only the second Indian to be so. After Upendra Kishore's untimely death in 1915, Shukumar found himself having to edit and write much of Shandesh. A strange genius now attained full flower as he wrote and illustrated a series of poems in, unique in the Bengali language, influenced among others by Lewis Carroll and Edward Lear. They are the first and possibly last examples of successful nonsense verse in the language. Like Lear, Shukumar drew accompanying sketches. Professor, style, okay. excuse yes. me. Yes, this is Dr. Banerjee. I'm just wondering, were you advancing your slides as well? Uh, no, no, I, I, I wasn't. I wasn't. Okay, actually. I'm sorry. Excuse me. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Um, I, I'll start the slides in a bit. Uh, this is the sort of, uh, you know, pre-slide part. His style suggests familiarity with the works of Den W. Denslow, Arthur Rackham, Winsor McKay, and Rudolf Dirks. Uh, here is a slide now, who created the figure of Cats and Jammer Kids um, comic strip in the early 20th century. The Cats and Jammer Kids were again the inspiration for the poem uh, called Bapare Ki Dan Pite Chile. And, this is, and it's a kind of a common trope in comics of this period, the terrible twins, uh, about which more later. The most famous of Shukumar's poems, as you know, was gathered in a volume called Avul Tabol, etc. While Shukumar did not draw comics, he certainly experimented with a form of sequential art which might be considered proto-comics. Uh, I have not included that slide here, but anyone who looks at Shaito Shomogra will see. Uh, these understandably did not enjoy the popularity of double double creation, but may well have developed into something closer to comic book art had Shukumar not died so young. Now, when did the first example of comic book art appear in Bengal? An exact date is not available, but according to Devashi Shin, the first full-page comic art with speech balloons appeared in the Shondesh of 1921 and was the work of Shukhalata Rao, Shukumar Rai's sister. On the other hand, comics artist and uh, researcher Diptonil Rai uh, says the comics form, uh, I hope you can see the next slide, yes. The comics form first gained uh, popularity during the Second World War, courtesy the war comics supplied a plenty by the propaganda machinery of the Allies. This claim is borne out by advertisements appearing in the leading Bengali periodical in Probashi in 1940, employing comic book art. So this is this issue of uh, Probashi that you see in front of you, or this page. <clears throat> um, um, uh, this is April, May 1940, Boishak, 1347 Bengali year. A full page advertisement of the health drink Horlicks, comprising frames and speech balloons may be seen. Jotho Koribarer Bhangon Hoyte Rakha Horlicks Khan. Um, so a similar single panel advertisement for the analgesic Saridin is also to be found in the issue of 1940. Ray has also, uh, Ray has also unearthed a comic book ad for Sunlight Soap, appearing in the English Daily Indian Express in July 1942, during the height of the Second World War. It appears, therefore, that the use of comic book art in advertisements precedes the comic strip proper in Bengal, at least uh, in the case of Bengal. Interestingly, Advertisements would continue to feature comics till at least the 80s, some in several languages across India. Um, so for example, you can see here, um, let me see, the next slide. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry about this. Um, the Dippies, uh, Dippies Squash, or indeed, uh, here you see another one, uh, let's see. This is uh, Binaka Toothpaste. Um, Again, I'm sure this will this will uh, you know trigger childhood memories for many of you, or you you see here the uh, cricketing hero Kapil Dev appearing, uh, endorsing the BSA SLR sporty bike, uh, and what was even more well known was the series of uh, black and white as well as colored, Pali Poppins series of Ram and Sham Ram and Sham here as you can see in the Great Poppins Robbery, and these appeared in several languages across India. So, for instance, here you see this in Bengali, Gupta Dhaner Khoji Ram Asham, again appearing, um, and, and talk, to talk about this uh, in a bit. Um, um, and and, and, uh, and if, lest you thought that this was only restricted to sweets and confectionaries, you have venerable organizations like the Yuko Bank in this slide, or the State Bank of India, also um, uh, um, uh, uh, advertising, uh, using the comics form uh, in advertising. Again, uh, obviously these were uh, advertising agencies which produced this, this artwork. We do not know uh, the, the creator or the artist uh, who, who, who drew and uh, 
uh, wrote these uh, these comics but again these have to be considered as very important uh, elements in the ecosystem of comic books in uh, Bengali periodicals now the first outside um, um, uh, advertisements the first comic strip as far as we've been able to find out dates from 1952 Shuktara uh, children's periodical founded in January 1948 just after India's independence by the publishing house of Devshait Tokuti was the first to feature the comic strip in its pages the house traced its origin to mid 19th century to the mid 19th century and became one of the best known children's publishers and in fact to this day um, in, in, in children's fiction in the 20th century. When the first Shuktaras began to come out, they were modestly illustrated in black and white with covers in color. The first comic strip in Shuktara, and I'm going to skip a couple of slides, and I'm going to, uh, uh, is uh, in fact um, this, is uh, Hada Bhoda, but a very different Hada Bhoda that for, with which uh, you might be familiar, um, was a one, one page strip of four equal panels featuring the adventures and travails of two schoolboys, Hada and Bhoda. The picture of a grasshopper appeared in lieu of the artist, Prutul Chandra Pandavadha's name. Uh, Hada Bhoda cast in the Laurel and Hardy mode were thin uh, and fat respectively. Um, not, so, not, not, not very pronounced here. This would develop into, um, uh, you know, harden into thin and fat much later. In, the, in fact, from the mid-1950s, a one-pager titled um, Laurel and Hardy Shamudra Jatra, excuse me. Um, Laurel and Hardy Shamudra Jatra began to appear under the sign of the same grasshopper. These featured the duo, that's to say Oliver Hardy and Stan Laurel, in a largely Indian setting, though it is doubtful whether any permissions were obtained for this adaptation. There is some confusion though over whether Hadavada was started by Pratul Chandra Vandavadde or Narayan Devnath who took over the strip in the mid-50s. As you can see, the style of the early Hadabo, this is not the style of... <clears throat> um, um, uh, Devnath, who is still alive, as you know, reminisced once about his early work in Devshet Tukuti. He said that one day, Kirud Babu asked me, there are no comics in Bengali for children, could you do one? I immediately said I could. I remembered how children would play in the street in front of our shop and the mischief they got up to. I made stories out of them, drew accompanying pictures and called the resulting strip Hadabodha's antics. Now, Devnath may possibly have got this wrong. I mean, he's, he's, he's very old now. It's the style of the early, and, and there is, and most comic, comic scholars, many of whom have now been working on Adabodha, are, are agreed that the early work was, uh, in fact, not, not Narayan Devnath, and Devnath took over from, <coughs> excuse me, Potul Chandra. In fact, the other thing was also, and, the, and this has led to a great deal of, um, I suppose, um, controversy in, in comic book circles, is the, um, adaptations or uh, even the kind of uh, um, copying of frames that <coughs> did not um, uh, it, he was he was provided with comic books from <coughs> and, and by the publisher from uh, uh, Europe and America and asked to adapt them to Indian condition and many of the frames are in fact uh, uh, such as in Bahadur Beral or in Fabatul the Great are in fact uh, can be traced to original frames <coughs> original panels in uh, Dan Dare or, 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 or other kinds of uh, uh, um, Western sources, but that's a different, that's a debate uh, that I don't really want to get into at this point. Um, along with magazines, the newspaper had also begun to emerge as a space for comics, though it was in the form of the cartoon that it was more familiar to readers. Again, difference between the differences between the strip cartoon, the comic strip. Again, I'm not going to go into the technicalities of that. Though a discussion of cartoons is beyond the scope of this lecture, mention must be made of the iconic Pratul Chandra Lahiri, 1900 to 1975, aka PCL, and Kafi Khan, whose first cartoons began to appear from 1930-31. In 1934, he joined the staff of the newspaper Amrita Bazar Patrika and spent the rest of his professional life drawing cartoons for the newspaper as well as the Bengali daily Jugantor. His popular strip Kuro, Uncle, began running in Amrita Bazar from 1935 and a strip for children called Sheal Pondit in Jugantor from 1937. In 1954, we find him drawing a two-page comic on the birth anniversary of the poet Rabindranath Tagore and more works of sequential art followed through the 50s. This period saw several strips appear and disappear, with Hada Bhoda now drawn uh, by uh, Narayan Devnath as a constant. Uh, another strip which appeared very briefly again by Hada uh, Narayan Devnath and disappeared 
was this shutki and mutki because again one of the things we often deplore is the a absence of um, women uh, or or, or uh, in, in in the comic book in an overwhelmingly male male world uh, uh, shutki and mutki was drawn by devnath but uh, he was he was accused of uh, what we might what we would now call body shaming and he was forced to withdraw this uh, in the 50s though of course the same criticism was not made of hada buddha I, I i think overall this this was this was a pity because uh, you know this could, this could have been as you can see this the, the the figure of the two girls are based again i suppose on on western models i i, I can think of at least one figure from richie rich on whom the uh, on one of the one of the characters might be traced too but uh, this was short lived and you can see here also um, um other other the evolution of hada buddha the hada buddha as we know uh, now uh, was somewhat different in the so you can see here uh, different dress uh, drawn in a slightly more realistic mode uh, another version of hada buddha here uh, uh, and then of course uh, professor shorka referred to monte fonte uh, again sort of um, riff on the terrible twins this is in fact one of the early um, cover pages of shuktara in its eighth year 1954 now uh, this is where the magazines really begin begin to uh, um, support, particularly Shuktara begins to support a, f a wide variety of comic book art, and I'm going to show you um, um, some of these. Um, so ranging from, let us say, uh, Batul the Great to Hada Boda, to biographies of, uh, for example, here we have a biography of Shami Vivekanando. This is the Shuktara of 1963, March, April. Um, so, uh, comic book biography of uh, Shami Vivekananda showed a willingness on part of Shuktara to break new ground, uh, as you can see here, while the detective, so here, this is uh, the famous Chicago Address, Sisters and Brothers of America, while uh, Tushar Kanti Chattopadhyay began to draw um, uh, the detective, uh, the detective strip also made its appearance in the form of Shokher Goenda Nishit Rai, uh, Private Eye Nishit Rai, also in Shuktara. This is 64 March, April. The quality of these um, strips was uneven, but it was clear that uh, despite the backlash against comics in the US in the mid 1950s, in fact, if you if you look at the history of comics in the United States in the 50s, there is a moment of crisis when um, there's a uh, in, in, um, the, the and which which sort of coincides with uh, McCarthyism when a book called A Seduction of Innocence by uh, Frederick Wertham, who was a pra was practicing psychoanalyst in Harlem. Uh, and who, could, who who sort of indicted comic books, not so much comic books as the advertisements they carried for juvenile, for, for, for promoting juvenile delinquency. And there was in fact a Senate subcommittee which looked into this uh, and, 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 and the comic book industry suffered greatly as a result from, from the bad publicity. There were comic book burnings. Uh, and this, these were particularly directed as, as a genre of comics called uh, crime comics, where you would have uh, very, very graphic uh, uh, art, uh, particularly very graphic cover, uh, cover art, uh, violence against women uh, and with crime in very large letters and does not pay in very small letters. So that, that was a kind of, that, that really never happened in this part of the world. Um, and and Shuktara was particularly in a promoting comics with a vengeance, uh, a wholesome, wholesome family comics. So here you see Shokhir Gohan Danishitra, again not very well drawn. I mean, as I said, the quality of all, this, uh, all these drawings are uneven. Or here you can see, now this is interesting again. Now, Didi Potat Dorwal Shikare Tuleche. Now, you will not realize it, but in the very last frame, you realize this is an advertisement for Ever Ready Battery. Now, you can see the rest of it. It's a very, very nicely drawn strip. Uh, it's dark. There's a bird which is injured. These children, they rescue the bird, and they, they, they manage to revive the bird. And the last frame, last last panel, Ever Ready Torshta Thakate Tamrake Bachate Parlam. Uh, so this is this is again as i said uh, it's not as if advertisements are using comic books in a very explicit kind of way they're also doing it in a very understated kind of way where the main focus is in fact the comic book story and it's only in the last panel that everybody adds says okay this is our doing um so um so uh, the, the quality of as i said the shukta in particular was widely read across all sections of the bengali reading public and stood for solid family as well as nationalistic values another entrant into the comics field was the children's publishing house of Shishu Shaito Shongshot, who came out with what might well be the first ever comics versions of the Indian epic Ramayana, the Chobite Ramayana, in 1956. Drawn by Puno Chakraborty, the work has shown remarkable durability, not having gone out of print even once. I, mean, I remember it very clearly from my childhood, and I suppose it is uh, read uh, even now. 
Um, so now, in 1965, now we move forward a couple of years, as nationalistic fervor ran high over the second India-Pakistan war, Shuktara decided to join the war effort in a somewhat novel way. It commissioned the chief artist Narayan Devnath to draw a special comic strip featuring his homegrown superhero, Matul the Great, in combat with the Pakistani army. Though Matul had debuted in the same magazine in June that year, the strip had a limited success. But it was with the appearance of Matul in the October-November issue of 65, which you can see in front, that the costume superhero formally entered the Indian comic book imaginary. Uh, the comic scholar Shuchitra Mathur claims that despite the rise of such series as Amar Chitrakatha, Diamond Comics and Indrojal Comics in the 60s, what was con conscious by its conspicuous by its absence during this period was the creation of any specifically Indian superhero. Now this may be the case in Hindi. But the triumphant rise of Batul from 65 onwards tells a very different story. What was more notable about the Batul strip is how little it owed to the idea of the American superhero or caped crusader. Um, as is well known, the American superhero began life as a local vigilante but was soon co-opted into the war effort, first during the Second World War and then during the Cold War. In the process, many superheroes morphed from being local vigilantes into global supercops with a beat that extended from Metropolis to Moscow, as in the case of Superman. Now, again, I'm not going to go into um, Batul's uh, antecedents and, uh, you know, the, 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 the troop of the terrible twins. Uh, again, as I've said, as I mentioned before, they owe a great deal to the uh, to the to the uh, American uh, cats and jammer kids, which um, um, was created um, where, where you have a similar kind of anarchic pair of uh, terrible twins who wreak havoc, um, etc. But again, I'm not going to go into an analysis of that. Now, um, without doubt, Batul the Great has proved to be the most durable Indian superhero across all languages. Partly, that is going to the astonishing longevity of its career, creator Naran Devnath, born 1925, <coughs> uh, who still continues to produce Batul strips, though this does not quite explain the durability of the strip in the age of easily available and highly sophisticated animation on TV and internet. The reason could be partly nostalgia on part of parents who have to buy the comic books for the children, partly a yearning for a more innocent and sentimental thesis, but there also remains for young readers, a certain appeal for what Scott McCloud calls the iconic style. In McCloud's classic theorem, it was as if there were one set of lines to see, and another set of lines to be, enabling a seamless entry into the world of the icon. The Batul comics with the uncomplicated style of drawing, easily accessible storyline, and above all, low prices in comparison to say, Tintin comics, have therefore continued to hold their own in the marketplace of the Bengali comic books. And I can see a few more of these examples. Now, moving on um, from Vivekanando and Nishit Rai to um, this man, Muyuk Chaudhuri. Um, but before that, a couple of words about, sorry, I mean, this, the sequence of this has gotten slightly, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, confused. Um, so let me, let me, abandoned my, my my written paper for a while but uh, talk you through these slides as they appear one by one because this is a sort of chronological uh, viewing so here you can see uh, we are in the mid 1960s and I think you know you're actually looking at uh, the same periodical the same issue carrying uh, so a cross section of tastes and genres from the same periodical from the same issues so here you have Ondo Makosha uh, one of the first first appearance of Moyuk Chaudhuri the artist known as Moyuk Chaudhuri his actual name was Prashad Rai man who died in tremendous penury and pain, but perhaps the most original of all Bengali comic book artists. <clears throat> Again, the story is not great. I mean, it's a, it's a kind of a pedestrian story about, <clears throat> about a blind wrestler and a thief who attacks his house. So while this is going on, this is 1965, here is something really very interesting. This is 1969, the cover of Shuktara. Now, Shuktara's covers began to feature a serial comic book story. Again, this is mostly set in some kind of a very exoticized uh, Africa. But why? Why did the why did the feature color? Uh, why or why did the feature a comic comic strip on the cover? This is this is quite unprecedented in uh, uh, in, in in comic books. The only precedent precedent is in manga in Japan. Now, of course, the reason is very simple. The cover page and the back cover were the only two pages to be printed in color. 
This was followed by Batul the Great, which was painted in which was painted in two colors, bicolor. And the rest was all black and white. So if you had money only to print one form or one form and color, it made sense to put your comic book on the cover because that way you have a comic book in color. So in a sense, you are economize you are you are maximizing your your uh, the potential of color instead of putting the comic book in a black and the comics in a black and white format inside, you could actually put in the cover. And Shukta really pioneers this, thereby using the cover as a, a part of a continuing story. So here you see an example of this. I'll show you more examples. But so if this is one genre, the cover genre of uh, a kind of uh, somewhat uh, racialized Africa, we also find sci-fi, science fiction, Harano Gruhet Jontra Manob, or the rise of the robots. This is 1962 Shuktara. September, October. Again, very interesting. It's such a very domestic setting. So you can see Bikkhato Bhaiganik Prashanto Boshu Chhele Shomiro Tar Bhabi Putni Nabavashya Dinayak Parke Bayate Gachi. And then you, know, you think of, okay, this is a story out of Bengali cinema and suddenly robots rise. Um, this is the same issue. And I'm just sort of just giving examples of what a reader, this is 1969 Ashar, what she would expect. Look at this from Shuktara. 1970. Um, again, another African story. Um, what is interesting again for perhaps for comic book uh, aficionados is to note the lettering. You see, um, how did the how was lettering there? So the, the, the different kinds of lettering, the different kinds of word balloons, the way in which um, th this is again of interest. I mean, were these hand lettered? Were these printed? Obviously, part of it was hand lettered, part was printed. Uh, again, this tells us, uh, uh, or uh, it it it. it uh, uh, enables us to perhaps to piece together this kind of invisible ecology of labor that is going on in producing these comic strips. Or here you see perhaps the most uh, remarkable example of comic book art. This is a serial called Aguntuk. Uh, this ran to 60 or 70 pages, a full length graphic novel drawn by Moyuk Choudhury about aliens on earth. Uh, but um, not a very crude storyline, quite told quite quite a, in quite sophisticated manner about a doctor, about a professor and his uh, formula which um, um, which people want to steal. And uh, then there are two aliens who fight amongst each other. And what is interesting is that one of the aliens, you see, you see one of the aliens who are sort of, who look like human beings, um, it's not visible in this page, but they have retractable nails and this is before Wolverine you have a character called Ura who is the kind of hero the alien hero of the story who then reveals himself to be an alien because he has these pointed ears like Captain Spock or Leonard Nimoy and then he has these retracting claws uh, pre-Wolverine and, and what this is what Moyuk Chudri was really very good at in drawing these kind of uh, uh, sequences of violence not just between human beings but also uh, uh, within animals um, um, kind of an you know, orchestrated violence he was extremely good at. Now, um, um, he, he was, um, uh, you know, the sort of, sort of action lines, etc. all of these. And I'll talk a bit about uh, him later. Um, so, as we go on, this is while a reader would see Aguntuk, and the next thing that reader would find is Amrita Shaman Mahabharat Kata. Again, as you find out, Borulin, Borulin House Kotrik Pochatu. Again, one of those, see, and this is not just a standalone page. This is, in fact, a serial story. The serial, Mahabharat drawn in serially, again, sponsored by Borulin. Again, unfortunately, we do not know the name of the artist because it's a ad agency doing it. Or, if you're still sticking with Borulin, Borulin is also now presenting Troy and Juddho, Iliad and Odyssey. Ramayana and Mahabharat, now Iliad and Odyssey. You see Achilles. So this was, when we were children, this was our first, for many of us, the first uh, 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 exposure to, uh, uh, to, to, to the Greek epics. And these were stirring pictures for uh, 8 or 9 or 10 years old to see. Achilles is leaving in half and then on the battlefield of Troy, the Trojan war Hector and so on and forth. And the same issue, you would see this, 1973. Um, the unlikely combination of Odrish Bordhon, Doyen among science fiction writers, and Narayan Devnath. Now this story I remember very vividly because this quite scared me as a child. <clears throat> this two-page thing, they wrote the Daktar F. Hashad. And then it's only on page two that you realize that this is also an ad, an advertisement for Benzid Benzidrol. 
Uh, again, this kind of very understated advertisement. You read two pages, there is this old man in the well who, uh, who, who is pulling on the beard of the doctor or the professor and is finally appeased when uh, he's given this sort of slabs, uh, kicks of Benzedril and he's happy. So um, another um, another instance, Bokahiru, uh, different kind of a genre, one of the very few instances of <coughs> comic book art I've been able to find drawn by women, a woman, Moitre Mukherjee, um, another example from her Shona Rupa work by Dilip Dash, or the slightly more sophisticated uh, Shokti Moy Bishesh drawing uh, Shivaji's, the life history of Shivaji, Kishon Nayok, as you can see, again, quite stirring, a uh, lot of action. Uh, again, I, I have total recall of this page, Shaista Khan, one of the most, you know, uh, and as this, this is 1974, around um, about the same time, uh, the life of Ramkrishna Paramahamsa, Paramahamsa begins to be drawn <coughs> by Juge Juge by Dilip Dash. So you can see the kind of, this is 1976 Boishak, uh, 77 Boishak in fact, or 76 Boishak. You can see the extraordinary variety of this, uh, of the genres that were being presented by a uh, magazine called Shukhtara. Let me also show you some more in, instances of some other periodicals. So. Uh, this is a magazine called Shishu Shathi, which carried, uh, again, we don't know who, who was drawing these because these are unsigned. Fokirir Karamote is serial, or indeed the Rajoshi Lalbadu Shastri. Again, who drew this? Why? Uttaradikar, possibly a series of Jataka tales in the same magazine. Now we move over to the third and the last magazine which I want to talk about, Kishore Bharati. In 1968, a new children's magazine called Kishore Bharati emerged as a rival to Shuktara. Um, published by startup Patra Bharati, Kishore Bharati embraced the comic form with enthusiasm. By this time, this had become a publishing necessity as the comic book landscape nationwide had been alert, altered by two landmark multilingual series. First, there was Phantom Comics, created by Lee Falk in 1936, made uh, its appearance in India as part of the Indrajal comic series in March 1964. The series was launched by Bennett and Coleman, the publisher of the long-running English daily newspaper, The Times of India. The series began in English, but regional translations soon began to appear, the first being Bengali, from January 1966. There, of course, uh, almost overnight it became a household sensation with the purple tights wearing Phantom and his sayings entering everyday lexicon. Uh, this was also the time when had Phantom merchandise began to appear in the Indian market in the form of stickers and posters. Uh, I should add here that in the Indrajal comics sequence, Phantom was translated as Betal. Now when Ananda Bajar Potrika, the house of Ananda Bajar, began to publish Phantom, they had to, and that was, Betal was a franchise trade name, so they could not use the name Betal. Thus the necessity for Nirendra Chakraborty to translate, it, I think, the happier translation of Arunno Deb. And you will also note that the franchise of Phantom is split into two different bundles. So while Indrajal Comics published the Phantom in color and as single issues, um, Ananda Bazaar Patrika published it in black and white and as Sunday, uh, either either in one page in Desh, Patrika, Desh magazine or as single strips in the weekly newspapers. So this was a, this was a different kind of production. And this was a different kind, different version of the Phantom Comics. So and therefore, the uh, Indrajal comics could not publish it in newspapers or periodicals in black and white and vice versa for Ananda Bazar Patrika. Um, the other series which had begun to ramify across India was Anand Pai Zamar Chitrakatha. Since its founding in 1967, the series had had more than 400 titles, 20 Indian languages, sold over 90 million copies. Subject matter drawn from Indian history, folks and fables, mythology, biography and epics, in short, everything that could be classified under the rubric of Indian culture and heritage and acted as a kind of supplement to the school curriculum. And there's a great deal of scholarship on this. Now, given the presence of such competitors, Kishore Bharati added, needed to move into new directions. In 1971, it turned to Narayan Devnath to draw a detective series. Incidentally, the series on Vivekananda Yusa was also drawn by Narayan Devnath. Now, uh, the result was a hugely popular monthly series titled Black Diamond, featuring a villain of the same name and a detective named Indrajit Rai. Uh, you see here uh, another uh, example of, uh, excuse me. Um, now, the first story, Rahoshomai Shei Barita, saw Devnath employ a style as different as possible from Bartul. To begin with, there were repeated use of cinematic technique. Now, you see, in the opening page, as you saw, <coughs> is mocked up to read like a 
ফিল্ম ক্রেডিট ফিল্ম উইথ ওপেনিং ক্রেডিটস কাহিনী চিত্রনাট্য সংলাপ দিলীপ কুমার চট্টোপাধ্যায় চিত্ররূপ নারায়ণ দেবনাথ শ্রেষ্ঠাংশে ইন্দ্রজিৎ রায় এটসেট্রা এটসেট্রা শর্ট ফলোড বাই মিডিয়াম শর্ট অফ দ্য সেম সাবজেক্ট কনসিডার দি ইভেন মোর বেশিস টাইটেল কার্ড অফ দ্য স্টোরি চাঁদনি রাতে উইচ আই নট শোয়িং হিয়ার ওয়ের দ্য first uh, whole page comprising six frames is devoted to the credits uh, now the stories in this black diamond series uh, revolve around the question of the identity of black diamond who usually turns out to be hidden in heavy disguise among the cast of characters there is for, there's therefore some degree of misdirection which the detective must overcome before black diamond is unmasked there is an attempt to disguise the thinness and improbability of the plots by crisp dialogue, dialogue writing by chattopadhyay um, but these two often lapse into the lugubrious largely on account of the comical figure of chandrakali dash writer and sidekick to the detective so the writing is in great but devnath on the other hand is assured in his draftsmanship uh, and often rescues the storyline with a verve and flair of line and shade as is evident in these pages as we see here I mean, this is very different than devnath some of the best works in these pages is infused with a certain noirish feel um, uh, etc so now as um, other detective strips again i don't have um, slides for all of this uh, uh, other detective strips um, um, such as vishesh uh, drustombo tried to indigenize the figure of the detective situate him in a gritty urban setting uh, this story again which appeared in kishor bharti uh, crime in a petrol pump is unevenly drawn but has moments of inspiration especially in its depiction of urban set pieces such as bridge underpass petrol pump or street crossing there is even an attempt at cross referencing influences as you know there is one page again uh, i think this is in a different slide sequence i have where you see a poster of shotojit rai's film sonar kela the scorpion uh, which appears shangatik uh, cinema so this is a kind of again a new note in uh, where uh, you you are you are looking at a kind of daily contemporary urban reality in comics now as bengal entered the turbulent 1970s street violence became everyday part of urban life the nationalite movement with a stated intent of assailing the landed and propertyed classes could not but leave its traces in comic art such work was mostly published in kishor bharti which displayed a refreshing willingness to engage with political material another watershed moment was the imposition of emergency by the indira gandhi government which led to a nationwide censorship and a muzzling of dissent and now this strip is the last one I'm, i have to show you I'm, it's getting late a uh, palabar pothne this is no escape drawn by shubhuto gangobadhyay came out <coughs> in the annual number of kishor bharati of 1977 a few months after emergency was lifted as you can see the timeline right uh, set in the calcutta of 1970-71 this is a tale of violence with which a son returns to take bloody revenge upon family members who had caused the death of his father the young man jona is part of a street gang whose um, task is chiefly to carry out action to secure the turf but he violates gang discipline to embark on his own personal action of revenge the plot is again trite even conservative with jona portrayed as the wayward son of a zamindar gone astray but what is striking about the work is the deployment of a dense overcrowded style with text and images jostling for space frames get broken up into jagged edges while the text tries to fill up every Uh, excuse me uh, uh, text tries to fill up every uh, um, bit of space available often snaking its way around the frames most of the frames are close up of faces either that of a killer or those who are killed reinforcing the threat implicit in the title there is no escape palavar pothne the outdoor scenes are drawn almost to punctuation but they're really brilliantly drawn deserted streets seen from dichirico angles now if you look at this this uh, this this page the one in the middle if you were to blow it up you can see this remarkable perspective in 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 there is someone standing on a terrace and looking down at a crossroads where three or four there are several levels uh, which our eye is uh, asked to uh, travel over so this is very sophisticated uh, again but um, 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 uh, deserted streets uh, or rooftops drawn looking down upon cross hatched light and shade as jona guns down his victims one by one lines from a poem by the rebel poet Qazi Nazrul Islam trail in his wake the poem called Bidruhi or the rebel is familiar enough but its apocalyptic retributive premise invests the killing with a kind of a, almost a heroic horror 
And now, again, this is the, in the last in this last slide. You can see here that the, the writing. If you if you look at the very last frame, the rat takhon duuto hobe Kolkata goli theke rajpoth shop kichu ghume dhole poleche. Amar ki lampos guli she shonde theke che che chok chok tadhe ranga hoy uta chaat chege achi ni sano shwa kar puti kai. It says, you know, this the writing is not great, but the but the streetscapes, the the close up of the uh, lamp post, etc. All of this is remarkable. Now, Shubhato Gangobad, they didn't do anything of any more of comics. I mean, this has recently been, not recently, five or six years ago, been translated into English. Perhaps the only work of this kind which has been translated into English in Obliterary Journal Volume 1, published by Blaft Publications uh, in, in Chennai. Uh, but, um, you know, in conclusion, um, you, I, you, 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 you heard me say that I would stop before Ananda Mala, and there's a reason for that. I think um, with Ananda Mala, the, there is a shift in the comic book art. It moves over to material which is uh, not homegrown. It's not so. You have Tintin. You have uh, Roy of Rovers. You have Tarzan. Uh, as we know, we have heard that uh, Tintin was brilliantly and uh, memorably translated in Indian Chakravarti. Possibly it was Shrutujit Rai who uh, introduced. Who, you know, when I think Abhishek Sharkar was uh, looking for uh, or or. I'm not very sure. Looking for comics suggestions from Shotri Babu used to read Tintin comics, every, buy Tintin comics every time he went abroad. So he, he proposed, again, I may be wrong here, uh, uh, that Tintin would be a good thing to translate. And then it became a part of um, the Bengali cultural landscape. But the other kind of comics did uh, continue to appear in Shondesh, uh, Kishore Bharati, and, uh, so, uh, and, and uh, Kishore Gambig, and Kishore Mohan, and so on and forth. But um, Really, the, the, that ecosystem did not develop um, um, uh, post 70s. Moyuk Choudhury, who perhaps could have been the one figure to have uh, um, made that possible, also died uh, in, in poverty and uh, pain. Uh, so, in a sense, you are, we looked at a, a kind of a prehistory which stops at a certain point, which is why I call this search for a lost archive. There is a, uh, I mean, from the from the 90s again, the Indian um, graphic novel became popular, artists such as Orijit Shin, Sharnath Banerjee and so on and forth. They began to produce comic book art or Amruta Patil. Uh, and there is now this belief in the Western world that Indian comics, the Indian comic is in English. But I think uh, what needs to be told and, uh, and, and revisited is the fact that, and this is not just true of Bengali, it's true of Malayalam, Tamil as well. It's a very rich tradition of comic book art in uh, uh, these languages. Uh, which had a golden period uh, till about the 1970s. Uh, subsequently, market pressures, other other kinds of competition from uh, comics from the West made these unviable. Um, and uh, even today, in the 21st century, well, there are there is the comic books have now become serious objects of study. I mean, I, I've I have supervised at least two PhDs in, uh, on comics. In fact, in 2003. The department in which I teach, the English department of the university, started teaching comics in the undergraduate course uh, when we first switched over to a semester system. And now, uh, every MPhil or PhD interview, at least 20, 15 to 20, 20, 10 to 15 percent of the proposals are on comics. And this, of course, comics of all kinds, uh, of all from all places, um, from manga to uh, uh, works of Arch Spiegelman and Alison Bechdel and so on and forth. I mean, it's, it's an extraordinarily um, uh, uh, important genre all across the world. Uh, but what I try to illustrate through this little talk is to uh, is to sort of perhaps the main it's it's the main task it will achieve is that of a kind of a nostalgia uh, and a kind of a regret perhaps that this that did not flower as it might have. Uh, but who knows? Uh, others might still come along and carry on the work started by Moyuk Chodharina and Devanath and others. Thank you very much for your patience. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Abhijitda, for this engaging and illuminating deliberation. I'm sure this will encourage uh, new researchers and students and scholars in this area. Um, thank you once again for um, making time for us. Uh, with this, we have come to the almost approach to the end of the, today's program. I now request Dr. Indra, Indrani Chaudhary Dutt, 
senior faculty of this department and IQAC coordinator of the college to deliver the vote of thanks. Indranidhi, please. Uh, it is with great pleasure uh, that on behalf of Professor Shandukta Dash, head of the Department of English, that I am assigned to give the vote of thanks. Professor Obhijit Gupta is very familiar to all of us whose loyalties as alumnus of Jadupur remain a lifelong tradition. Uh, Obhijit, thank you very much, very, very much. Um, it was indeed an eye-opener uh, to see the linkage between the world of advertisements and the comic strips. Um, I was also reminded of um, uh, certain strips also, I think if I'm not mistaken in Ananda Bajar, Go in the Reef, Jadukar Mandrik, I think those were also that uh, we used to read in our childhood. And uh, obviously at some point of time, I'm sure the Department of English would like to hear from you uh, from the comic strip to the graphic novel. Uh, we would like to hear from you at some point of time. So Professor Obhijit Gupta of the Department of English, Joint Director, School of Cultural Texts and Records, Jadapur University, thank you very much for giving us this erudite lecture. We also thank the family of Srimad Mandalika Banerjee and especially Dr. Rajat Banerjee who has joined us from the US uh, for giving us this endowment to enable us to invite speakers like Professor Obhijit Gupta and enrich the academic uh, element in our department. The Alumni Association of Lady Brigham College, its president and all our respected members of the alumni, thank you very much. Our audience comprising of our respected guests and many old faculty members as well as our beloved students and teachers, thank you very much for attending Mandalika Banerjee Memorial Lecture. Professor Shuli Sharkar, who set the tone of this very interesting talk. Madam Sharkar, thank you so much for giving us that wonderful introduction. Uh, our tech support team, Arvind Prasad, AAA Tech, thank you for giving us this smooth technical support. And last but not least, especially my young colleagues from the Department of English, actually it's their yeoman's effort that has made this successful presentation without any hitches. Thank you to everybody and we hope to see all of you again in the next edition of the Mondalika Banerjee Memorial Lecture, hopefully in our COVID-free late 2022. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.